All right, guys, welcome back to another post-production tutorial. Um, We're inside Lightroom 3 again, as you can see. Today, we're going to go over some lens corrections. Now, Lightroom 3 has a really strong, really powerful lens correction tool built into it. Um, It's been updated a lot compared to the previous versions, Lightroom 1 and 2. Um, basically, if you're doing anything wider than about 24 mil, so say you're shooting with a 14 to 24 millimeter lens, which is what this image was shot with, Things that are meant to be straight aren't straight anymore. Now, we all know that lenses just aren't as sophisticated as our eyes. Now, we can see things the way they actually are. Um, when you're doing video work, this kind of things, lens correction and things that are tilting over, it's called keystoning. And in photograph, it's, it's the same sort of thing. As you can see, things here just aren't straight. Now, what we'll do is we'll go over a couple of basic techniques to fix this. Now doing architectural work this is vital because when you're doing things for instance like this kitchen this is for a client I can't give them a kitchen people are going to look at it and go oh wow your kitchen's tipping over you can't do that you need to correct your images now Photoshop also has a really strong built-in tool that does this um they've been doing it for quite a long time Lightroom 3 does it as well I pref I actually prefer it through Lightroom 3 I find it to be a I don't know, it just, gives you, it just gives me a better effect and I've got more control over it. I mean, Photoshop's one is good, but I just personally prefer Lightroom's version. And I, I think theoretically Photoshop's is a, like, it's a little bit more in-depth and you can do more with it. But if I needed to go that far, then I can just, you know, I can hit Command E and I'm in Photoshop straight away to fix up any more problems. All right, so look, in the Develop tab, what we're going to do is we're going to roll down to uh, Lens Corrections. Now, there are profiles. Lightroom has built a lot of profiles for all these different lenses. So obviously the, the majors, which are Leica, Nikon, and Canon, they have a bunch of different things that have been built in already. So automatically this photograph knows that it was shot with a 14 to 20 mil, uh, 14 to 24 2.8. Now it does an okay job, not really what I want. Um, this is a default thing, like there is customs that we can go into, but what I always do is I don't do the profile corrections. I move straight into manual because this is where you get all the control and you can really, really define things exactly how they need to be. All right, first thing we're going to do is constraint crop. Always make sure that you tick this unless you know what you're doing, unless you specifically don't want it ticked. But when you're altering an image with any kind of corrections when it comes down to distortion it does crop your image so that's why I tend to shoot a little bit wider than I usually would if I'm using for instance this uh, 14 to 24 mil lens I, you know I, I usually shoot at 14 or 15 because I can always crop in a little bit later on um, I tend to try and stay clear of cropping in other images but when it comes down to lens corrections I really have to do it so constraining crops basically just going to save your image if you turn it off you'll see what happens whenever I go if I go to adjust it like that the image is now I've got these stray edges around the sides as soon as I click constrain crop you can see what it does it crops it in like that so let's just we'll just undo that quickly um, what I want is option click zero so what I want to go over quickly is this image only needs the vertical distortion um, adjusted that's all we need to do to it so again constrain crop and all I do is I'm going to plus just keep moving up a little bit and tool I can see I'm using this fridge this straight line of the fridge as my guide as well as this corner of the um, the edge of the, the kitchen table there if I keep on going I have to get it basically in line with the grid so the grid um, appears when you hold when you start like moving the slider and you need to make sure that your lines are going to be straight. So look for something that's meant to be straight in the scene. So for instance, the edge of the fridge or the table, the edge of the table in front of me. So about plus 14, plus 15, uh, plus 16, that's probably pretty much straight. Now, as soon as I let go, that's a lot of my images. That's basically my image has been corrected. Now you look at the difference when I turn preview before and after, that's at 15 millimeters, um, 7.1 to ISO 200, 125th of a second. Uh, only thing that matters here is the focal length, which is 15 millimeters. Now, on, off, on, off, on, off. You can see there is a huge difference. Things don't look like they're tilting over anymore. As I mentioned before, this happens in video as well when you're doing filming, um, you know, structures, bridges, uh, houses, buildings, all those kind of things. In video, it's called keystoning when it looks like it's falling towards you or falling away. Um, there's also lenses out there that are made really 
a lot of people don't know what perspective control lenses do, but they are really strong in the architectural photography side of things because they can, can they can fix um, keystoning and incorrect lens corrections within the lens, so you don't have to bring it into post production later on. So anyway, on off you can see there's a massive difference being done here. Um, this is a raw image, so honestly, this is a very quick tutorial, but I can just go up and just show you what I would do um, in the in the visual side of it to get it a little bit more punchy. The first thing I do is because it's raw, I always shoot in raw if I'm doing this kind of work. In studios, I shoot in JPEG and any, any other kind of work I shoot in raw. But first thing you need to understand with raw files is that they don't do any corrections inside the camera. That's the whole beauty of it. It's not throwing away data like a JPEG does, but it doesn't give you any sharpening, it doesn't give you any tonal contrast, any curving, uh, any curving, anything like that, any, any saturation, um, any all that kind of stuff. It doesn't do it in raw images, but you, if you're shooting in raw, then you want to be able to do that later on. So first thing for me is always I'll pull up the, well, I don't care, everything just went white for a second, sorry. I'll pull up the blacks and... Why is it doing that? I think there's something to do with, because I'm running the screen casting thing, that it's having a bit of a freak out. And uh, when I do the adjustments, wow, that's never happened before. That is so bizarre. Anyway, um, this is what I'll do. I'll pull up the blacks. I'll pull the recovery back a touch, a little bit of fill light. And the saturation for me, I pulled down just a touch. It just gives more of a, more of a realistic look. The saturation up too high is just a bit too much. So straight away, you can see um, the difference that has been made. If I go to reset, it's going to take everything back. It's going to move the, uh, the 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 lens corrections, and it's going to move down all the visual adjustments. So if I hit reset, you can see what happens straight away. Oh, it just goes back to really flat and really the kitchen is about to tip over. Undo that, goes back to what I want it to be. So the blacks have been pulled up. I probably pull them back just a touch. As I said, sorry guys, it, it's for me that's looking all white. I'm not sure if it's going to show off in the actual video, but. Lightroom doesn't really do that. I probably should have rebooted Lightroom because it's been open for about two weeks now, so I should probably close it down. Anyway, just really quick tutorial. What I'd be doing again is cropping it, hold Option down to constrain proportions from the top to the bottom. Same in from the left and right, hold Option down, it brings it in correctly. Double click. There we go. That is not what I delivered to the client, but that's what I'm going to show to you guys. Um, if I was delivering it to the client, I really, I bring, this is where I bring it into Photoshop and I do all kinds of different things. I make the floor look a little bit more contrasted, but I work in layers. I split the floor up, I split the, um, the benches up, I'll split the roof up, I'll put those all into different layers. So um, I can work on them individually. I basically, I'll go and mask it out and then I can work on it separately. Now I'm just doing an overall... Um, a global adjustment is what it's called so anyway guys I hope that helps this is just as I said a really quick one I'm going to go into more detail with uh, lens corrections because it is a huge thing and as I said Lightroom does it really well but this is just really quick for the start so if you guys have any questions or anything you want to you want to ask me let me know and um, yeah if not I will talk to you guys soon again sorry for the weird thing that Lightroom was doing but well shit happens all right I'll talk to you guys soon bye